Now that looks like fun. So I tracked down a famous taiko master, Renzan Sensei, in Yamagata. He's not only a superb musician, but he takes in women, foreigners, and other unusual sorts. And he makes the time to teach each one of them personally. He even allows women to play the Odaiko drum, which takes an enormous amount of strength and stamina. But in return, Renzon obviously expects a lot from his students, no matter who they are. In the end, it all comes down to hours of hard work and relentless discipline. So it's with a certain amount of trepidation that I decide to take a Taiko seminar. It's harder than it seems. Taiko, it turns out, is as much about how you look as it is about how you sound. You have to learn to extend your arms, spin smoothly, and remember whether to look up or towards your audience, while still keeping the beat. And never, ever glance down at your music sheets, though in my case it doesn't do much good. I didn't expect to find so many women in the class, but I'm even more surprised to see them enjoying themselves so much. Most traditional Japanese arts focus more on the struggle than the fun. Maybe that's why taiko is so explosively popular in Japan. On the last afternoon, we give a performance. Even after days of grueling work, everyone is still enthusiastic. In fact, they can't seem to contain themselves. Despite their pain. I still can't play, but at least I've got the most important part down pat. But the best is yet to come. A live performance with Renzon's troupe. To get there, we take a 12-hour bus ride to Aomori, way up north. They're on the road together constantly. I'm starting to realize that these guys are more than just a team. They're really family. And once we arrive, they move into action like a well-oiled machine. Setting up is an enormous amount of work, and they can't afford to make mistakes. The drum alone is worth almost $400,000. And finally, what Taiko is really meant to be.
finally makes his grand appearance. He turns out to be the comic relief. Though Renzon does give him a moment to showcase his talents. turning the spotlight back to where it belongs. Renzon is neither meek nor modest. In many ways, he's very un-Japanese. But being such a showman is exactly what makes him so popular. He embodies everything the average Japanese simply cannot afford to be.